morning, church. It's so good to have all of you guys back online. And I can't wait to worship with all of you guys. So let's worship our amazing God, who is faithful and true to his word. The God of the impossible. Sing with me just one word. Just one word. You call the storm that surrounds me. Just one word. Darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes were open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He the name that makes a way there's nothing that our God can do let's try in just one word you hear what's broken inside that's right just one word and you revive every dream come on it's time to start dreaming again just one touch just one touch
search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's anti-praise And treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along
Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to be here and worship you, Lord Jesus. We stand in awe of who you are, the things that you have done for us, Lord Jesus, and the things that you will continue on to do for us, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are a God who makes all things new, and I pray that in this season, Lord Jesus, that you will bring forth restoration, Lord Jesus, that you will make those things that have been emptied whole again, Lord Jesus, that you restore the things that have been broken and you bring healing, Lord Jesus. We believe that you're a God of the impossible, Lord Jesus, and there is nothing that you cannot do. So I just pray that we will lean into you through it all, Lord Jesus, as we continue on going on our, our daily lives, Lord Jesus. May whatever we do uh, be pleasing unto you, Lord Jesus. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't worship me, God.
I have a question. What are you passionate about? A person who is passionate about something devote most of his time doing it. He enjoys doing it and it has become his lifestyle. He may feel tired, but that feeling of being tired is overpowered by joy. The fire keeps burning in his heart. But what ignites this passion? Is it the love that is divine? God commanded us to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength. Do we spend time with God every day? Do we soak ourselves with His Word? Do we serve Him with all our strength? Do we have the skills and talents that we are enjoying right now? I believe so, we have. We do have different skills and talents that put us where we are right now. That is okay because these talents and skills are gifts that God has given us. Through these talents and skills, many people around us are blessed. They come to know God as we display these talents and skills and as we serve them. When we serve others, we serve God. We are called in different areas. I am called to teach and I am always passionate about teaching. I love doing what I am doing. I serve God through this ministry. Some of us are called to serve in other areas and we enjoy it. We glorify God through serving others. I remember when I was in the university, I did not desire to become a teacher. But because God intended me to be, He led the way. And I found my calling as a teacher. Well, at first, I insisted because I thought that that is not really what I want. But when I was there, when I was exposed the first time in the field of teaching, I found that love, I found that passion, serving the children, teaching them from the heart, molding them, as Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's always been my motto. Remember, God also commanded us to love our neighbors as ourselves. God put us together and we form a community that love and serve Him deeply. Let us be passionate in serving others, as passionate as Jesus, His divine passion. We are called for a greater purpose. May you be blessed and continue to be a blessing to the people around you. Keep that fire of God burning in your heart. God bless you, everyone. everyone it's the first week of march and we are so happy that you are here joining our online church service today i just want you to know that it is not an accident that you are here joining with us we pray that you may feel the gentle touch of god's blessings in your heart and may he fulfill all your heart's desires and your plans all our activities are now conducted online. Adult General Church service on Saturday is at 5 p.m. and on Sunday it is at 10.30 a.m. The link for both is the same and it is shown on the screen. The Youth Church service is at 3 p.m. every Saturday. The link is also shown on the screen. 
For the Kids Church, Pretense class is on Saturdays at 4 p.m. on GMIT. We have another kids class on Sunday at 10 a.m. This is also done on Google Meet. We encourage all of you to invite your relatives, your friends, and especially your family members to join the online church services we have. And pray earnestly that they will be blessed. We are also inviting you to join our Dawn Prayer Fellowship at 5 a.m. or at 7 p.m. daily on Zoom. The link is shown on the screen. Or you can send a WhatsApp message to this phone number shown on the screen to get the link for the Zoom Dawn Prayer Fellowship. The WhatsApp number is 0812-940-8493. The first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. There is also a similar moral principle in the Bible about good and evil. What you put out into God's creation will bring a return for good or evil. What you add to the well-being of life on earth, you will receive back in fulfillment. What you take and scratch and steal will be taken, scratched, and stolen back. God desires to multiply that good through us now while we are here on earth. That is why He created the church. So I'd like to ask you today to give because that's what God created you, us, to enjoy Him and to bring that joy to others. That is why we encourage you to participate in the ministry of IES Northwest in reaching out the people in need of the gospel. Please transfer your tithes and offerings to this bank account number that you can see on the screen. Luke 6 verse 38 says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let us pray for our tithes and offerings and also for the message today. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity that we are still able to listen to your word despite of the happenings around us. Father God, we also would like to thank you for this opportunity that we can give all the blessings that we are possessing right now, these are all coming from you. And Father God, as we give, we pray, O oh Lord, that our heart will be right in your eyes. Father God, we pray that this money that we have collected will be used to expand your ministry and help the people in need of your gospel. We pray, O oh Lord, as well, that as we listen to your word, you are going to cleanse our heart and our mind. No destruction will be upon us so that we can know and easily understand your message for us today. Father God, anoint the pastor who will be sharing to us. May you um, help him, Father God, in delivering your words. We thank you, Lord, for this very moment. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't it great that all of us can come together and worship God on this weekend? At this time, I just like to take all of us to learn together this exciting topic that comes from the life of Jesus Christ. A lesson from the great servant. Let us open our Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 20 to 28. I'm going to read it from New International Version. 
Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This might come as a surprise for all of us because we know who Jesus Christ is. He is the Son of the Living God. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is equal with the Father. He is equal with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is Lord and God. But one thing that we all learn today from this scripture, just as the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, did not come to be served, but to serve. And this is a fact. This is something that we must all understand. Jesus Christ, although He is equal with the Father, He is equal with the Holy Spirit, when He came here 2,000 years ago, He did not come to be served, but He came here to serve all of us. He came here to serve you and to serve me. And this is uh, something that we all must uh, come to an understanding. This is uh, something that Jesus Christ uh, had in his heart. Yes, he is the head of the church. Yes, he is the one who rules everything. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. There is nobody else above Jesus Christ. He sits on the highest place. But yet, when He came here, He came to serve us. He came to serve you. He came to serve me. The leadership in the kingdom of God runs differently with the leadership of the world. If we want to be seated at the highest place, we must become somebody who serves others. We must put ourselves in a position that we can serve many. That is the kind of leadership that the kingdom of God has. And let us learn from the scripture what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago to all of us. Because what He did actually is a very good example for all of us to follow. One thing that we have to realize when we want to serve others, one factor that we must have in our life, just like what Jesus had in His heart, because it takes great humility on Jesus to serve us. It takes great humility. And one thing that we know, certainly we are not in a position deserving to be served by the great Son of God. We are not in that position. We do not deserve to be served. But yet Jesus Christ chose to serve us. If we want to talk about position, He is way greater than any of us. But yet, He serves us all. If we read from the scripture, we know that uh, from the book of Mark chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, We can read from the story. Jesus ate with sinners on the same table. He was invited by Levi to visit his place. And Jesus went to Levi's home. And at the house, at Levi's house, what happened was Jesus was there eating together on the same table with tax collectors and sinners. 
And what Jesus did, invited the Pharisees to ask questions to his disciples. Why does he eat? Why does Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners? But that's what Jesus did because he had great humility in his heart. He lowered himself on the same level with tax collectors and sinners. He was on the same table together with them. He did not separate himself from tax collectors and sinners. It took great humility on Jesus. Even nowadays, at uh, certain homes here um, in Jakarta, some families have servants who help them, uh, assist them, uh, cleaning the place. And during uh, meal time, um, I'm aware that uh, the families will sit on the same table. But the servants, they have a separate table. They don't eat together with the family members. And that is uh, something that is uh, uh, not strange, something that is common. It is commonly done here in Jakarta and maybe uh, in many places around the world as well. For those people who are fortunate enough to have uh, uh, servants or house assistants. But uh, what happened during Jesus' time? Jesus, he did not separate himself. He humbled himself. He ate together with the tax collectors and sinners. It took great humility on Jesus part and then we also have another example it's taken from the book of John chapter chapter 13 verse 4 to 5 we know from the story here the only beloved son of God was the feet of the disciples so he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus Christ took initiative to wash his disciples' feet and something that was not commonly done even during Jesus' time. Jesus lowered himself. He was willing to wash the feet of his disciples. It represents humility. It represents a great humility. And I believe that all of us can learn from Jesus Christ the one who is highly exalted the one who is worshipped by many the one who deserves the highest place but he has a great humility in his heart he humbles himself he has this uh, 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 state of mind that is willing to serve others and I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to every one of us so that we can also humble ourselves we can also learn from Jesus Christ so that we can embrace this godly character humility we have to humble we have to learn to humble ourselves I have to learn to humble myself so that 
we can serve one another just as Jesus did we have to serve one another and to be able to serve one another we need humility and then what else to be able to serve one another the second point is in addition to humility we must have patience in our heart and it takes a great patience on Jesus to serve the people Jesus was not judgmental on the people he was not judgmental to the sinners he was not judgmental to tax collectors he was not judgmental to the people that he came to serve there was a story taken from the book of John chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 this is a well-known story when Jesus saved a woman caught in adultery these people brought this woman to Jesus Christ and these people was these people were ready to uh, call a verdict these people was well were ready to throw a stone at her but Jesus he defended the woman Jesus was not judgmental on the woman and I think we have to follow the footstep of Jesus many times we are too judgmental on others many times we are too judgy we like to judge others we like to uh, be legalistic in our approach to others we like to call something black and white yes we cannot tolerate the word of god yes we have to uphold the value the moral values of the kingdom of god but we have to know the application of the moral values that we know the application of the good values that we have learned from the scripture is for ourselves we have to be judgmental on ourselves we must be loving to other people but unfortunately many people they don't know how to put the good application to what they have learned they are judgmental to people and they allow themselves to commit to break to break the law and it has to be the other way around we must guard ourselves we must watch ourselves and we must be loving to other people so the word of God that we know is to be applied to ourselves and the loving character that we that we learn from the scripture we must apply it to others so Jesus was not judgmental on the sinners what happened on the next story taken from John chapter 4 verse 1 to 42 Jesus met this woman at the well the Samaritan woman and the same attitude that Jesus gave to that woman caught in adultery was also there Jesus was not judgmental to the Samaritan woman instead Jesus was pouring out his love unto her Jesus was patience he exercised great patience to be able to serve others we must exercise great patience and Jesus instead of condemning because he exercised great patience on her Jesus saved the life he changed the life of this Samaritan woman and also the third character that we have to know when we want to serve other people in addition to humility in addition to patience we must also have a loving heart to be able to serve others we must also have a loving heart 
And this is what Jesus showed to all of us. From the story we read Matthew chapter 8 verse 28 to 34 Jesus visited two madmen of gatherings. A lot of people avoided this madman because they were crazy. But Jesus purposely visited that place to meet these two crazy men. He took a loving heart of the great Savior. He even valued these two crazy men because he came to serve and not to be served. And Jesus healed those two crazy men. Another story from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, 27 to 30. Jesus healed two blind men. Those two blind men were crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Please heal us. And people were courting these two men aside because these people thought that these two men were disturbing the ministry of Jesus Christ. But instead of approving the people who were courting away those two men, Jesus stopped and he called those two blind men. And Jesus went over, he visited, he went to those two blind men. He approached those two blind men. And Jesus, out of his compassionate heart, out of his loving heart, he recognized the need of those two blind men. It takes a loving heart to meet the need of people. Sometimes we don't like to address the need of people. Even when those people come to us, we already know what they, what is their need. We like to talk something else. We don't want to attack the need directly. We like to avoid the subject. That is understandable because it is in our nature it is human nature to avoid troubles we like to avoid troubles we don't want to take risks we don't want to be disturbed we want to have a peaceful life we want to have a, a life that is not disturbed by meeting this troubling people But that is not what Jesus did. He went over those to those two blind men and he talked to them. He went straight addressing their problem. What do you want me to do for you? And Jesus, because he was able to meet the need, he met the need of those two blind men. How many times we have the resources, we have the ability to meet the need of people, but we withhold, we do not release, we make a conscious decisions not to extend our arms of help. But that is not the case with Jesus Christ. He knew he had the ability to heal and he released the healing. He released the healing. And I just like to speak to all of us. I'm speaking to myself as well. We have to learn from Jesus Christ. We have to learn from our great Savior. Many times we have the resources. We have the ability but we withhold, we 
do not release and let us learn together when we have the ability when we have the resources to meet the need of somebody who is crying out for help let us have a loving heart it takes a loving heart to serve others there's another story from the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 10 to 17 Jesus healed a crippled woman there's so many other stories in the scriptures Jesus acted out of compassion out of loving heart to meet the need of people and let this short sharing equip us change us let the Holy Spirit change our heart soften our heart so that we can also be moved out of compassion from John chapter 13 verse 13 to 15 it says you call me teacher and Lord this is what Jesus said rightly so for that is what I am Jesus said now that I your Lord and teacher have washed your feet you also should wash one another's feet I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you and that is from the scripture and Jesus said he, ha he has already set an example. And we call him our teacher. We call him our Lord. We must follow his example. Let us serve one another. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. It says, you my brothers and sisters were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Let us embrace this um, scripture. Let us embrace the word of God. Let us serve one another humbly in love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you. Thank you so much for this wonderful time that we can all learn together from the word of God. And Lord Jesus, I'm praying. I'm praying for myself. And I'm praying also for all people who are listening to this message. Change our heart. Touch our heart, Lord Jesus. So that we can learn to serve one another. And Lord Jesus, if you are somebody who sits on the Most High and you can serve all of us, who are we, Lord Jesus, that we cannot serve one another? And Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray so that every one of us here will have that heart that is able to serve one another. Give us humility. Give us patience. Lord Jesus and give us a loving heart so that all of us here will start serving one another thank you Lord Jesus for the message we bless your holy name we give you praise Amen I believe that you already prepared your bread and your juice. So let's take the Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's raise up our bread. Father, we thank you for what you have done, Lord, on the cross. And again, we commemorate, Father. So today, Lord, at this moment, we pray that you are going to minister to us. You touch our lives, O oh God. 
for us to continue, Lord, to respond to your call to us. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. Let us raise the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink the juice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us raise our hands for the benediction. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for what you have done, O God. And thank you that you have given us this opportunity to remember that, Lord, that you have saved us through your blood, O God, and that you died on the cross for each and every one of us. Today, help us to continue to grow in our faith, to be faithful to you, no matter what is going to happen. And again, we commit our lives, our lives to you, Lord. May the love of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be with us all always, and all the children of God will say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you again next time.